We're back on midday with news to you. Plans to close a longtime Buffalo High School and a fiery end to the standoff between the feds and a religious cult in Waco, Texas. Dave McKinley is here now with our weekly walk back through time when those stories and more were all news to you. Ten years ago this week, the Obama administration proposed a new border crossing fee on travelers, including those using the Peace Bridge to help pay for homeland security. That was a bridge too far for Congress, which rejected the idea. And 12 years removed from 9-11, the TSA proposed allowing airline passengers to resume bringing small knives and sporting goods like baseball bats and golf clubs onto planes. That did not fly with the labor unions representing pilots and airline attendants, though, and to this day, those items remain as verboten as they were this week in 2013, 20 years ago this week. It isn't working the way it is. And so Buffalo Public Schools announced it would turn the page on one of its high schools, which had been in operation for 66 years, and close it. It's going to have a devastating effect on the uh, community. And if the school closed, we don't know what we're going to do. This week's news to you pop quiz, which city high school did they announce would be shuttered due to increasing student violence, poor academic performance, and the threat of a takeover from New York State this week in 2003? Remember, this was back when... With 50% of the population now using cell phones... Fewer of us were scrounging for quarters. But because none of our cell phones took pictures yet, disposable or single-use cameras were still highly popular. Buffalo's undefeated baby Joe Macy was continuing his ascent in the heavyweight ranks. PETA offered the town of Hamburg $15,000 if it would change its name to Veggieburg. I'm not kidding. And Buffalo Common Council President Darius Pridgen was an east side preacher, still nearly a decade away from even seeking elective office. 30 years ago this week, when the store clerk still manually slid your credit card through an imprinter, also known as a zip zap or knuckle buster, the National Holocaust Museum opened in Washington, and the Oneidas were building Turning Stone, the first legal casino in New York in more than a century. Meanwhile, a much darker story was about to unfold. By 8 o'clock, an armored vehicle with battering arms smashed the front and back, pumping in what the FBI said was non-flammable tear gas. But not long after, the nation watched as a hellfire erupted and brought to an end the 51-day siege of the Branch Davidian compound near Waco, Texas. The order to move in came from Attorney General Janet Reno, supported by the president who surmised... Some religious fanatics murdered themselves. All these years later, though, there are conflicting beliefs as to whether the fire was sparked by what actually was flammable tear gas or if cult members under the direction of their leader, David Koresh, said it. There is no dispute, though, that he and 76 followers, including 25 children and two pregnant women, perished this week in 1993 when it was all news to you. All right, so... Here is the answer to this week's news to you pop quiz. Did you recognize the Buffalo High School, which the district announced plans to close 20 years ago this week in 2003? What was Kensington High School, which opened in 1937? Years later, though, it resumed operation as the Frederick Law Olmsted School at Kensington and now serves both middle and high school students. So it's not empty after all, Patrick. Do you remember that uh, Branch Davidian story? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And there's a new documentary, right? There's got to be. It is. It's it's happen. incredibly yeah, it interesting to watch. To, it's a an amazing timeline of the start of it, which mm -hmm. was the the gun battle, and then, you know, what took place the following 51 days. It's, it's I really need to something. check it out. Yeah. yeah.